or you could take 10 minutes right now and you can change your life forever. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things you didn't know about Will Smith. The, the bigger the laugh, I realized the, the less I was the black dude. For this list, we're looking at lesser known facts about Willard Carroll Smith Jr. Yes, that's his full name. Do you have any fascinating facts about the Fresh Prince? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. He broke a Guinness World Record in 12 hours. In 2005, Hitch set a box office record for the biggest romantic comedy opening at the time. That's what it's all about right there. See how it gets bigger? While that record has since been topped, Smith would set another milestone with Hitch. To promote the film, Smith visited three red carpet events in 12 hours, setting a Guinness World Record. Hey, what's going on? Good a wave. What's up? How you doing? This feat is only made more impressive considering that Smith traveled from Manchester to London to Birmingham. We can see why Smith didn't have time for any costume changes, wearing a casual camel coat, leather hat, and jeans to each event. In 2009, Indian actor Abhishek Bachchan broke Smith's record with seven public appearances in 12 hours, traveling 1,800 kilometers. As far as Hollywood stars go, though, Smith may still be the one to beat. Just relax, okay? Just let it marinate for a second, trust me. Number 9. Money problems paved the way for the Fresh Prince. Before becoming a bankable actor, Smith was one half of the hip-hop duo DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Hitting it big early on, Smith went on an excessive spending spree. We made a bunch of money, we won a Grammy, album was triple platinum. I had motorcycles and cars. I called the Gucci store in Atlanta and I was like, Hey, will y'all close it down if I bring my friends? And I'm smiling, but that's stupid. As sales declined, Smith neglected to pay his taxes. Even after the IRS repossessed his luxurious purchases, Smith remained $2.8 million in debt. So they came to get their money, and, they, and I didn't have it, so they took everything else. Taking his then-girlfriend's advice, Smith appeared on the Arsenio Hall Show, where he met producer Benny Medina, who was developing a semi-autobiographical TV show. Although Smith had no previous acting experience, he grew more interested in the project following a party at Quincy Jones's. Ironically, as his character was living it up as the Fresh Prince, Smith was giving 70% of his paycheck to the IRS for three seasons. We so rich. Why we can't afford no seal? Number 8. He boycotted the 1989 Grammys. Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince's early success extended to the Grammys, where they won Best Rap Performance for Parents Just Don't Understand. So to you all the kids all across the land, there's no need to argue, parents just don't understand. In addition to being the first Grammy for Smith and Jazzy Jeff, it was the first time that the Grammys presented this particular category. Yet the Grammys decided not to feature the category on the 1989 telecast. The duo thus decided to boycott the Grammys that year, with Smith calling the rap category's omission, quote, a slap in the face. And our boycott was to open their eyes to rap music, so next year some rap group will be able to perform on the Grammys and the, the award will be televised because the music is large enough and important enough to be on that show. With fellow nominees Salton Peppa and LL Cool J joining the protest, the Grammys televised the category the following year. Jazzy Jeff accepted the duo's second Grammy for Summertime in 1992, while Smith picked up his third Grammy in 1998 for Men in Black. This, this is actually the, the first time that, that I've ever been on a Grammy stage. Number 7. Yes, he can solve a Rubik's Cube that quickly. In a Season 3 Fresh Prince episode, Will wins over the Princeton recruiter by solving a Rubik's Cube in mere seconds. Then I guess my work here is done. Oh, but as a parting gift. Uh, hey, yo. While that scene was significantly edited, Smith wanted to truly master the cube while shooting The Pursuit of Happiness almost 13 years later. Rather than use a hand double, Smith sought out speedcuber champions Tyson Mao, Toby Mao, and Lars Petras for guidance. As Chris Gardner, Smith solves the puzzle in a roughly two-minute scene, impressing a potential employer. Mm -hmm. 
Smith demonstrated everything he learned on a live French talk show, solving a cube in 55 seconds. Given Smith's passion for math and chess, it's not surprising he could wrap his brain around the challenging cube. My father, uh, my father taught me how to play chess, and he taught me I was probably eight. And he trained me for four years. Perhaps he is Princeton material after all. Number six, the impromptu audition that turned his life upside down. As mentioned before, Benny Medina invited Smith to Quincy Jones's house party in December 1989. While there, Jones presented Smith with a script for a Morris Day pilot that never got off the ground. Tell me rap name again. They call me the Fresh Prince. All right, good. That's what we're going to call the show. And he handed me a screenplay for a failed Morris Day pilot. NBC President Brandon Tartikoff and his successor Warren Littlefield were also in attendance. When Jones asked him to audition in front of everyone on the spot, Smith felt that he needed more time to prepare. Taking Smith into his library, Jones essentially told him that meetings always get rescheduled, but everyone needed to greenlight the show was already in his living room. You know, Brandon Tartikoff, the head of NBC, is out there. I'll get him to schedule for next week. And then you know what's gonna happen? Something gonna come up and then he's gonna have to reschedule. Recognizing this once in a lifetime opportunity, Smith asked for just 10 minutes. The initial contract was drawn up in a limo that night, and the pilot was shot three months later. Terribly sorry, sir, but he's otherwise engaged. But I happen to be his close personal friend. <laughs> Number five, Jada and Tupac's friendship evoked envy. Before meeting Will at a Fresh Prince audition, Jada Pinkett Smith was friends with another famous rapper. Jada went to Baltimore School for the Arts with the legendary Tupac Shakur. L to the J. What's happening, baby? While they reportedly never became intimate, the two developed a close bond. Tupac wrote poems about Jada, who described him as, quote, one of her best friends and, quote, like a brother. In his memoir, Smith admitted that he endured, quote, raging jealousy over Jada's relationship with Tupac. Smith experienced, quote, a twisted kind of victory when Jada started spending more time with him over Tupac. Looking back, though, Smith regretted being too, quote, insecure to befriend the late rapper. That, that, that was a huge regret of mine. I just didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it, you know? I was, this, I was the soft rapper from Philly right. and he was Pac. Right. You well, know what I mean? When Smith accepted his third Grammy in 1998, he dedicated it to Tupac and another recently deceased legend, Biggie Smalls. We want to dedicate this Grammy to the memory of Tupac Shakur and the notorious B.I.G. Number four, childhood trauma. As upbeat as Smith can appear, his life has been riddled with emotional turmoil. Around age nine, Smith witnessed his father beating his mother. Smith was understandably too young and too scared to do anything, but he nonetheless grew up feeling like a, quote, Howard. Most of my memories of my childhood involved me being afraid in some way. Afraid of other kids, afraid of being hurt or embarrassed, afraid of being seen as weak. Not long before his father died from cancer in 2016, Smith considered shoving him down the stairs, believing that he could get away with murder. What made these feelings of vengeance especially difficult is that Smith still loved and admired his father. Will considered avenging his mother and his childhood trauma by pushing his dad down the stairs. At age 13, Smith also contemplated taking his own life after his mother left. Through his memoir and docuseries Best Shape of My Life, Smith has opened up about his childhood trauma, exploring the link between mental and physical health. We never talked about it. Um, the idea that I felt like I should have done something was so, you know, foreign. Number three, his feud and reconciliation with Janet Hubert. Following Fresh Prince season three, actress Janet Hubert exited, with Daphne Maxwell Reed taking over the Aunt Viv role. You know, Miss Banks, since you had that baby, there's something different about you. <laughs> In a 1993 interview, Smith stated, quote, Janet Hubert wanted the show to be the Aunt Viv of Bel Air show. On a separate occasion, Alfonso Ribeiro called Hubert, quote, crazy. Based on comments like this, many assumed that Hubert was fired. In reality, Hubert left because the crew planned to cut her salary. On top of raising a new baby and dealing with a cruel, unemployed husband, Hollywood turned its back on Hubert. No words can kill 
Mm -hmm. I lost everything. Reputation, everything, everything. Although Hubert stated in 2011 that she would never reunite with Smith, the two had a one-on-one -on -one almost a decade later. Smith apologized for not being more sensitive to Hubert's situation, seemingly reconciling. Come here, you. <laughs> Number two, eight $100 million domestic movies in a row. Smith has always been a box office draw, but he proved virtually unstoppable from 2002 to 2008. Okay. 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 During that period, he became the only actor to star in eight consecutive films that grossed over $100 million domestically. Men in Black 2, Bad Boys 2, iRobot, and Hancock were all released in July, contributing to his nickname. With Shark Tale, Hitch, The Pursuit of Happiness, and I Am Legend, Mr. July proved that his star power wasn't limited to summer. Smith did make a cameo as himself in the financial dud Jersey Girl during this time, but every movie he headlined was a guaranteed hit. Smith's streak officially ended with seven pounds, although even that film crossed the $100 million mark worldwide. This time, I love you. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Roles That Could Have Been For all his success, Smith has missed out on some high-profile pictures. Smith could have made his film debut in Boys in the Hood, but because of his Fresh Prince commitments, Cuba Gooding Jr. got the role. Well, everybody's here, so go ahead and have a good time. Okay. Rather than play Neo in The Matrix, Smith infamously signed on for Wild Wild West. Smith also rejected the titular role in Django Unchained, feeling that Dr. Schultz was truly the lead. Alas, now we must act as our own bartender. Smith has stated that he doesn't want to do movies about slavery, saying that he'd rather, quote, be a superhero. Ironically, Smith was considered to play the Man of Steel in Superman Returns, but he turned down that part, fearing backlash. Smith did eventually play a DC character in Suicide Squad, which he chose over Independence Day Resurgence. Nope, that's not the rules. No money, no honey. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.